may be seated. And we're just thankful uh, just to be in your presence today. Glory to God. And I'm here today to tell the church, keep your guard. In the midst of everything, keep your guard up. Amen. Don't get at, at ease in Zion. Come on now. We're too close. We're too close. And it would do the enemy good to take you out right at the gates of heaven. Amen. Amen. You got to watch how you start. And you sure enough got to be careful how you finish. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Most of the highway patrolmen I know will tell you that most accidents occur within a one to a three mile radius of their destination. That's it. Because when folk get in familiar environments, yes. they relax just a little bit. Yes. And that's all the enemy needs you that's to do. Amen. 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 Pastor Scott last week couldn't get um, Acts 19 out of her head. She's up there fighting with God. <laughs> She's up there fighting with God. I'm, I'm trying to introduce the pastor and the Lord said, "You, I'm using you today. So Mrs. Charles, she was trying to be, she was trying to be obedient but God was telling her to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Glory. And she tried to put that mic down, but she couldn't put that thing down. <laughs> we just bless God today. Amen. We got great people in this church. Amen. 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 How many of you know great things come in small packages? Yes, they do. Amen. Amen. Glory. So, y'all just pray for me today. Um, and, um, you remember when uh, Lot and his wife were leaving the city. Mm -hmm. And the instruction was, once you get out, don't look back. Amen? How many of you have ever gotten an accident or tripped because your attention was in the wrong direction? Glory to God. Told Lot's wife, told Lot's wife, don't look back. And if I understand this correctly, the archaeologists have found the statue of her body and is still there in place to this day doing this number. Looking back. So I want to talk to you today. Go over to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Don't have anything new. Because the truth is, Satan is attacking the church the same way. Amen. If you ever wonder why a man of God or a pastor would get up and you would hear him pretty much or her go over the same message week in and week out, that's based on his or her awareness that Satan is attacking the church the same way. Amen. Amen. You know, when you play the Los Angeles Lakers, it ain't no deep dog strategy. You got to stop Anthony Davis and you got to stop LeBron James. You stop them two, you go win. And so your strategy is geared around that. Well, the enemy is attacking the church the same way. And um, Matthew 12 don't have anything new verse 43 when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man exorcism and cast out he walketh through dry places seeking rest finding them then saith he then he saith I will return into the house, yeah. your body, from whence I came. And when he come, 
he findeth it empty. You remember I told the church a few weeks ago that in Israel, they call the hospital Beit Hole. It's called the house of the sick. And it comes from a Greek word, hole, which means void or empty. 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 Glory to God. Amen. And wherever there's a lack of God, there's always darkness and confusion. Yes. You remember that up in Genesis 1? Yes. Glory to God. God created a space that he wasn't in. Mm. The Bible says, let there be light. That's when God stepped into that empty place. But before that, the Bible said it was void and empty, and there was confusion upon the deep. Amen. Wherever there's an empty space, wherever there is a lack of God, Satan will move into that space. Amen. And, and when he first comes, you're going to have to go to the church and get delivered to get that thing cast out of you. Amen. And it's a good thing to be able to do that. But you make a grave mistake when you've been delivered if you go back and open the door. Amen. Amen. If you go back and open the door. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, I want y'all to catch this. I want y'all, when Jesus came on the scene, yes. when Jesus was born and by the time he became an adult he came into a pagan world are y'all hearing me he came into a world that was dominated by satan dominated by unclean spirits dominated by uh, uh demons and it was jesus who cast them out not only of the synagogues, but of the city. Yes. They were ran out of that area. They were driven out by the power of God. Yes. Because the entrance of thy word give it light. Give light. Yes. And light. And when the light cuts on, the darkness, got it got to go. Amen. Amen. But the worst thing you could ever do is get delivered by God and you choose to go back into the dark. Well, well, the same way he delivered uh, Jerusalem, Israel from the bondage of Satan. Wait a minute. Uh, when the gospel came to America, come on now, the same thing happened. The Lord came in Glory to God, evangelized the word of God, evangelized America. From one coast to the next, I believe where we are, they call this the Bible Belt. Amen, because there are more churches around here. You know, they're close to each other. It, they call it the Bible Belt because it's really hard for the enemy when the churches are operating in full strength, it's hard for the enemy to operate up in this That's area. It. I'm trying to tell you something now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. But America has been delivered, but America has regressed. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you, the title of this message today is that they're back. Mm -hmm. They're back. Amen. So when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, it walketh about on dry places, seeking rest, finding none. And then it says, I'm going back from whence I came. And when it comes back, it, find, it finds that space empty and garnished. And the Bible says, it brings seven more. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Even if you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and living a holy and sanctified life, if you happen to live in an environment and you live in the proximity of a bunch of unsaved folk. Amen. If you live, I can tell you right now, there's more unsaved people than there are saved people. That is right. I can tell I, I can tell I can tell you that right now. Glory to God. So no matter how saved you are, you're living in in an uh, uh, demonic infested environment. Yes, Lord. 
every day you leave your house, you're living in a demonic, infested environment. Yeah. Glory to God. You ever woke up feeling real good? Uh -huh. Feeling real good. Mm -hmm. That morning, went to work, had a good time, feel good. But by the time you got home that evening, you feel sluggish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, something you touched the doorknob, you came in contact with some type of virus that entered into your body. Yeah. And at the time that it entered in, you didn't even know it. Come on. So the sickness, the manifestation of it didn't occur at the time that it entered. Yes. It sat there and lied dormant. Yes. Come on. Yes. Until it weakened oh, your wow. immune system. Oh, yes. And when, you, when it weakened your immune system, then it stepped forth and manifested. Yes. Go back for a moment to what I said earlier, Genesis. There was darkness upon the deep, and, and there was chaos every place. When sickness hits your body and goes to a certain portion of your body, wait a minute, and causes that portion of your body to not function the way God designed it. Yes. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Yes. It, when it's not functioning the way God designed it, there is confusion. Yes. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Your body is wired in such a way that there's a signal that leaves your feet and goes up to your heart, your head, everything. That, it has to be a connection. If the connection is broken, there is confusion. I'm going someplace right now. We're living in the last days. We're living in the last days. Y'all hear me echo this all the time. You say there's not, he have another message. Preferable Dollar was called to preach prosperity. Benny Hinn was called to preach healing. Uh, healing Pastor Aiken was called to teach on the end times and to have those who were under his care ready for what's going on. Glory to God. So this unclean spirit has come back and brought seven more. Now there's seven demonic presences in you or in this environment or in this area. My wife and I were coming back from Charleston Saturday. A gentleman passed us in a sports car. Very nice sport car. Had the top let back. He driving like this and on the right side, he had a life size skeleton. A skeleton. He's riding up and down the highway. We went by several houses in Charleston that had skeletons which is the remains of a dead thing. 12, 15 feet long skeletons in their front yard. And we're celebrating, glory to God, All Hallows Eve. That's the month that we're in right now. And I don't, no one would have to tell me when we enter into this month. Every year I feel it. I feel the, the presence of evil growing. Come on, it's in this environment. It's all over as the inhabitants of this world celebrate their God. Y'all yes. ain't with me up in here. He ain't my God, but it's their God. Yes. I'm going someplace, y'all. Just y'all just be just be just, uh, uh, just just pray with me. Yes. So so go over to the book of Ephesians. Well, Ephesians six and ten tells us to be strong in the Lord, That's right. women, and in the power of His might. Watch this. Just because you shout don't mean you're strong. Mm -hmm. Come on. Your strength is determined by you surviving the attack. Come on, come on, come on. Because you're going to be attacked whether you're, whether you're weak or strong. But if you're strong, you're going to survive it. Oh, glory to God. So the Bible says be strong in the Lord and in the power. Wait a minute. In the power of his might. What does it mean to be strong in the Lord? When the greater one lies in you and you draw strength from him, you learn how to be led by him. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. You see, I, I, I wonder if Satan knows how to attack you when you're operating in an, an unsonship kind of mode. You see, because if you're a son, you're going to have certain characteristics. 
Oh, help me up in here. Thank you, Jesus. If you're a son, you're a daughter, you're going to have to have certain characteristics. And there are times, come on, one of the greatest crimes going on in the world today is called identity theft. Oh, help me up in here. When you're a child of God and you act like a devil, your intentions are devilish. Your intentions yeah. are evil. Yeah. Wait a minute. Subconsciously, whether you know it or not, you have opened up a door. Yes. You have opened up a door and those seven yes. are coming back because they're going around looking for vacancies. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You got a, you got a vacancy sign up on you. Come on. Y'all just pray for me up in here today. Pray for me up in here today. Lord, I give you praise. I put, I wrote this down. It takes power to deal with Satan. It takes power. Wait a minute. Not just a title. Or help me. Some of us are caught up in the title. Amen. It's not the title that empowers the person. It's the spirit of God that empowers the person with the title. Oh, I hope you caught that. It's the spirit of God that empowers the person to function in the title. Yeah. Mm. Judas Iscariot was an apostle. Y'all yeah. hear me up in here. Glory to God. Judas gets a bad rap. I'm almost done. Judas, you know what people remember about him is that he betrayed Jesus. But that was just a weak moment in his life. If you study the life of Judas, Judas was just as faithful as the rest of them. He left his job to to follow Jesus. He made a great sacrifice. I wonder how, why is it that, you know, Carl can do 50 years worth of great service and make one mistake and that's all they want to talk about is the mistake. They forget about all the times he let praise service and you came in in a dark place and the anointing on him lifted you up. They forget all about that. They just want to talk about the one time. And ministers, be aware of that. Be aware. They forget all about public. Mm -hmm. yeah, Paul I know, Peter I know, but who are you? Come on up in here. Judas was an, an apostle. Wait a minute. Judas had a bake hole moment. He had a moment where he was sick and lost his identity. Oh, come on, come on. And he operated as a thief. He operated as a traitor. Ah, Jesus. Let's go. When you remember the story, Luke 22, Luke 22, the Bible says, and Satan entered in. Boy, it's quiet up in this church. Can I tell y'all something? You can look down on Judas if you want. I don't think none of us in here walked in an anointed like that. I don't think nobody in here walked in that kind of anointing. So you got to be careful criticizing. Who glory to God? How powerful is your anointing? How great, is, how great is the enemy, the force that's coming against it? Y'all, they hear me up in here. The Bible says Satan entered into Judas. When? When he was going through an identity crisis. How many of y'all forget who you are? Oh boy, she fine. I'm going to put my Christianity on the side right now. I want to. I, I, I want to have it my way. Glory to God. You struggle with an identity crisis at that moment. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Weren't you with him? No, I don't know him. Who was that? Who was that? Peter. That was Peter. The one who walked with Jesus. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Come on. The one who talked with Jesus. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Come on. Yeah. Or oh, help me up in here. But then in that moment, he didn't know it. Watch this. And I'm almost done. I'm not going to be long. How many of us don't realize that we open doors Amen. 
unawares. Yes. We open doors and, and, and we're not aware of the danger of that moment because it looks simple. And the enemy belittles it, what you're doing, the act of what you're doing, he belittles it. Oh, you're about to watch him. It's just a little thing. One thing about sin, sin lies. Amen. Now, I didn't say sinners lie. Sin lies. I said sin lies. Amen. Watch this. You know who sin deceived more than anybody else? The father of lies. Sin deceived Satan. Yes, Come on now. Y'all ain't hear me. This man that we're fighting against. Somebody said, you call him Satan is the spirit. Well, according to Isaiah 14, is this the man that caused the world to tremble? That's what it said. They called him a man. Wait a minute. Sin deceived him because it caused him 